Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and record because I got a lot on my mind. A hell of a lot. I've been pondering a lot. I had to do my deep breathing exercises in my meditation. Deeply breathe in love and then slowly exhale thinking upon love and then deeply inhale joy and slowly exhale thinking about joy and deeply inhale peace and slowly exhale thinking on peace and deeply inhale patience and slowly exhale thinking on patience and deeply inhale kindness and slowly exhale thinking upon kindness then deeply inhale goodness and slowly exhale thinking upon goodness then deeply inhale mercy and slowly exhale thinking upon mercy. I do this several times a day, throughout the day, as I think about it, and it's helped calm me, because as I spoke about in another video not too long ago, how I have to work on controlling my anger, and to keep from going from zero to 100 real quick, you know, um, to not be so fired up, even though my personality and my sign is a fire sign. I'm very much fired, and I had to stop being explosive. I had to learn to, to not be explosive and to control um, my temper and my anger and hell, everything, self-control, you know, because the Father is about self-control. Satan is about indulgence, you know, so like things of the flesh, like I, I try to have self-control, you know. I try to not overindulge in things, but some things is a little hard for me not to overindulge in, like food. Even with vegan, even eating vegan, I still find myself eating to fullness and beyond sometimes. You know, and I make an excuse and say, "Well, I don't want to waste. It. I don't have containers and stuff like this." You know. Like, I don't want it to go to waste, so I might as well eat it. You know, if I make too much for myself. Like, I, I'm just one person, so I try to make, you know, single portion meals, but enough to where, you know, I'm not wanting to make more. You know, so, I don't know. Like, I, that's where I struggle in that. I struggle in... To maintaining my portions and not overeating, not eating to complete fullness. And you know, that, that's something that we have to unlearn because we're taught and we, we grow attached to eating till fullness, you know, and beyond. It has become a custom, especially here in America. You know, like, it's like, who doesn't eat till they feel like they're full? You know, like most people, that's that's how they do it, you know? But that's not good and it's not righteous. It's not what the Messiah taught. And, uh, you know, like these are things that I'm still, I'm convicted on. I'm convicted on these things. That's why it's on my mind. 
is on my mind that I'm convicted of these things, you know, that I haven't fasted the way that I felt led to fast, you know? It's like, damn, I can't even make myself fast one day a week. It should not be that hard. And for a time period, I was doing it, you know, and then I just stopped. But I need to get back into doing it. I, I literally need to get back into fasting, at least intermittent fasting. Then I was only eating like one meal a day, and for the most part, most of the time, I do still only eat one meal a day. But sometimes, and more lately than not, I have been eating more than once per day. Now, today I haven't so far, and yesterday I, I did. Yesterday, um, I decided to make some freaking fried uh, okra, some fried okra with uh, with a fish with a fishless fish fillet from Garden. I have one left, and um, I was feeling a little hungry, so I figured I'd make it. Now I didn't have uh, coffee yesterday. What I had for breakfast was a smoothie, so I actually did make my smoothie yesterday, and it had been a while since I since I made smoothies, you know. So, um, anyway, I just, even though I've been strict in my, in my quote-unquote diet about keeping the flesh and blood, you know, off my plate, like, I'm still struggling, um, to fast, you know, to get back into that, I'm still struggling to, um, not overeat and to not eat to fullness. You know, these are things where, you know, my mind has to be renewed. I gotta, I gotta, like, work on it, though. Because this is not something that's gonna take place overnight. But I at least wanna work on it and, and, and try to follow the leading of the Spirit of Truth and the leading of the teachings of the Messiah that I have learned. I wanna apply all the things that I have learned of the Messiah to my life. And I haven't. I haven't applied every single thing, every single teaching that I've, I've read and come to learn. I haven't applied all of that to my life. I've applied some of it. And the things that I have applied, I see fruit produced in my life from it. Therefore, it, it makes me look forward to applying the other things because it's like, dang, if I apply this little bit right here, I can already see drastic changes in my life for the better. What more if I apply these other things that he's convicted me of? It's just more things, more beneficial things to myself that will be produced in my life and more fruit for my brothers and sisters to be able to partake of. So these are, this actually I wasn't planning on recording. This actually is strictly straight from the Spirit. The Spirit had me talk about this for some reason. You know, because I had other things on my mind. I had other things on my mind to talk about, you know. So, um, apparently he wanted me to talk about my life and the things that I'm struggling with. Keeping it real. <coughs> Continuously. Keeping it real. I am not above my brothers and sisters. I'm not above them at all. There are some things that... Maybe they have self-control in that I struggle in. You know, maybe we got brothers and sisters that still partake of eating animals' flesh, but they fast and they and they do it more, and they have a they have a, a a better discipline of fasting than I do. Yet they're feasting upon flesh and blood. You know. Oh man. So it, it, it allows me to like contemplate my life and like where I'm at and how I'm not perfect and how I really ain't got no room to judge anybody, you know, because I'm dealing with my own flaws still. And I am not perfect, not by far. I have a desire to 
apply all of the things that I've learned of the Messiah to my life. I, it's like, man, I read things like, you know, you know, I told you guys, I am a smoker, okay? I smoke both weed and cigarettes, okay? Both cannabis and tobacco. Now, I know that cannabis, or I know that tobacco is detrimental to my health. I know that smoking tobacco is detrimental to my health, okay? Now, that being said, my mindset right now, my the process that's going on in my head at this moment in time is like, damn, I got all this other crap that I'm working on, still trying to do the weight loss and all of these things, you know, um, still slowly trying to change my diet, you know, dealing with swelling and all these things, and it's like, man, these things make me want to smoke even more, you know, like, uh, feeling like the stress you know, uh, of the world and like the state of the world is like upon my shoulders, you know, because I feel the calling to speak these things to, a, to the world before destruction and judgment comes, you know, because it's literally here is, man, people just don't understand how close we are. We are in the freaking half a times, so you ain't got much more time, okay? We don't have that much more time, you know? And so anyway, what was I going to say? Um, ah, I lost my train of thought because I went off on something else. Um, I want to apply the things that I, oh, do you know that I read in the same gospel of peace, words of the Messiah. I know for a fact that it was of the Messiah. I know for a fact. That it was his words, okay? Because he is straight wisdom. The wisdom, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. But his wisdom, the things that the that the that the Messiah gave lines right up with what the Father said in the beginning, okay? So what the Father said in the beginning does not change, all right? And everything that the Messiah came here to the earth to teach us. Lines right up with what the what the Father said in the beginning. Okay, the Almighty, Heavenly Father, Creator of all life. Okay, the Creator of our spirits and all of this. Okay, the Creator of all living things. The one that called it good, very good. All right. So, I read in the Essene Gospel of Peace the words of the Messiah that told me stay awake. From the smokes of Satan. Okay? So I read that with my own two eyes. I literally read it and I felt conviction in my spirit. Like, th this is the words of the Messiah. You know? It's like, I know in the back of my mind that really I'm polluting my temple by the smokes of Satan. Okay? All the chemicals and the poisons that they're putting in these cigarettes to try to kill us. Right along on top of all the poisons and toxins they put in our food, in our drinks, in everything, in our they spray in the skies. Like we're we're surrounded by freaking poison, okay? We're already surrounded by poison. And here I'm smoking cigarettes, okay? I'm I am i I'm a I'm a ten year smoker at least, okay? I don't, hold on, let me make sure I ain't been smoking for, actually I've been smoking for 20 years, okay, so I'm a 20 year plus smoker, alright, not not 30 years, but 20 years, because I started smoking when, I started buying my own pack of cigarettes when I was about maybe 20, 21, okay, maybe even 19, I'm not for sure, it was around in my, my late teens, early 20s when I bought my first pack of cigarettes, and I'm 45 now, alright, so... It's been about, shoot, 20, 25 years, if I'm 45 right now, 45, go back 20 years, that'd be 15, so it's not quite 20 years, it's not quite 20 years because I didn't start smoking when I was 15, so maybe like 15 years, okay, so like I'm about a 15 year smoker, alright, and I, I go through about maybe anywhere from a half a pack to a pack a day, okay? Not quite a pack, 
I don't even see the point anymore. It's like a, a freaking cage, you know, like, I cannot freaking explode. No matter how good my partner looks, you know, they, no matter how graphic it was, you know, and man, I, I should one day go into detail for y'all, but I need to prepare you for mature content. Y'all need to understand some things, okay? Y'all need to understand how deep it can get on a virtual world, all right? Because I wasn't fake on there. Now, many people would, would uh, claim that I was fake because I hid my birth gender, but I wasn't fake. I was still who I was. I was still who I still represented who I am on the inside, all right? I never faked anything about myself on these virtual worlds, you know? And even with the females that I was with, I, was with, I didn't consider myself being a player because I, I felt like I was up front with them except for my main one. Now, one thing I used as an excuse is the fact that when I met her, I don't know why I'm all over the place, but I'm just flowing by way of the Spirit. All these things that keep coming to mind, that like I feel like the Father is like, now touch on this. All right? So, um... When I met her, um, man, I forgot what I was going to say when I met her. Oh, when I met her, I was with somebody else, okay? I was with somebody else, and uh, I ended up leaving um, my former girlfriend for Jennifer, okay? I ended up leaving her for Jennifer, and... Get this, another one, okay, and another one. So there was three. So um, I left my, my other girlfriend for one, which was Jennifer, and then two of my friends um, that got to know Jennifer, and she went by Lila, uh, Lila Maria or something like that, I think, or she might have went by Brown Eyes. Uh, I forget uh, what, what uh, I forget what name she went by on Keneva when I was dating all three of them, okay? So, but a lot of it was fake, you know, because even though they all three were dressed as twins and we all would go out, you know, hanging out together, we'd go out to clubs and whatnot on the 3D, on the 3D world, all right? We'd go out and them three would, would be matching and I'd be dancing in the midst of them, okay? Um, the thing is, though, the other two never really liked me, let alone, they, they never really liked me, let alone love me, they didn't, they didn't care about me, like, at all, and Jennifer, the one that's still in my life, 12 years later, she knew it, but I didn't know it, okay, and, um, anyway, long story short, like, I felt like, well, Jennifer knew the type that I was when she got with me because when she got with me, I told her I didn't want to be tied down to one woman, you know? Like, I had always told her that. I always made it clear that I wanted to be free, you know? Um, free to date, free to, free to see who I wanted. And for, the, for a while, she went along with that until it seemed like she started having an issue with it. Well, she started having an issue with it after she didn't show great affection and great love to me, you know, um, and she hadn't really had that at all in her life, really, except from, you know, her family, but, um, me, you know, I never really felt it either, I never really felt like genuine love before from somebody, I didn't even know how to love myself, you know, so many of the things that she would do for me, you know, was, um, it would blow my mind, because I just didn't expect somebody to care that much for me. I never, I, nobody ever exemplified that, you know, in my life. But she definitely showed that she had deep affection for me. Um, even when the, the uh, cat came out of the bag about the gender, I was literally born. You know, she uh, never, she, she never uh, been with nobody like me. You know, um, she was, she considered herself to be straight. And pretty much all the women that I've been with considered themselves to be straight. And this is not bragging or tooting my own horn. 
um, it just is what it is, you know, so, um, she accepted me, um, for basically being quote unquote transgender, and, um, anyway, like I said, for a while, she allowed me to have several girlfriends, but then, um, when I was supposed to marry her and one of the other ones, see, the third one, um, I ended up letting my homie have her, and I, I know this had, this sound crazy, but at the time, I had a roommate, his name was Josh, and, um, then do I even remember this girl's name? Shoot, I know she would, I know, uh, Jennifer will remember, but I'm having a hard time remembering her. Okay, I'm having, a, and apparently she was this rich white girl, you know, but I didn't, I didn't really know her that well. I thought I did, but I didn't really. Um, but anyway, it was her and Mystery and Lila. Okay, so my homie, he wanted a girlfriend, the rich white girl. I talked her into being my homie's girlfriend. Okay, and so I had Mystery and. And Lila, Jennifer, okay? Um, and then I was supposed to end up marrying both of them. Well, at the last minute, mystery backed out. And so I ended up just marrying Lila. This was the first time that me and her got married on on a 3D. This is the first time I ever got married on a 3D virtual world. And I never, I never been married before, like, at all. So this was the, um, my first experience you know, and she had been married before in real life, um, and I don't know if she was married on the game before, I have to ask her that, I don't think so, I think this was her first time being married on the game, on a, well, on a 3D virtual world, at the time, I didn't, we didn't, we didn't consider it to be a game, um, because it was basically, well, we kept it real, we were real people within the avatar, you know, real feelings, real, you know, behind the avatar, we're real people, it's not like you're dealing with bots, it's not like, you know, the Sims free play where, you know, you, you, you get bots and you, you don't really have real conversations with people on there, where you can actually literally get on mic and, you know, voice with people on there, you know, so <laughs> um, it can get pretty damn deep, and with me being a passionate type a person, it was very easy for me to maneuver in the in the 3D virtual world and be happy there, because I was I was never really happy in my physical life because of my physical characteristics. Like people just never see me for who I was. People always, um, they they always underestimated me. They they always tried to put me in a box. They always like assumed I was supposed to be this type of weight, even though I was I never was. And because I wasn't, it made life very hard for me, because I I didn't fit in the in the box, you know, of the majority. So, three D virtual life made it easy for me, and I fell in love with that. And I never wanted to leave it. Okay, Tiggy. Alright, I'm I'm getting ready to wrap this up so I can take Tiggy out for a walk. Alright, shalom.